Welcome to Learning HTML5. My name is Matt. In this episode, we're going to go over the core of what HTML is, uh, the uh, tags that you're going to be seeing most often and most often using, and just how uh, HTML looks, how to write it. And we're also going to go over validating HTML, which is a very important part of making sure that the code we are writing is uh, good code. Uh, HTML stands for Hypertext Markup Language, and it really is simply just text. Uh, HTML can be written in uh, any program such as Notepad or uh, TextEdit. Uh, it's just a simple text file. You could also use a, a more powerful WYSIWYG program such as Dreamweaver, uh, but uh, across the board, any HTML file boils down to a simple text document. Now, HTML... Uh, contains tags, and tags are wrapped within the greater than or less than symbol, and it's these tags that tell the browser uh, exactly what our elements are and how to display those items. Uh, the tags are the uh, core of the uh, uh, programming language, and without these tags, um, our document would just be one big uh, paragraph. Uh, so the tags are a core to uh, displaying HTML in a graphical and friendly way. All right, so I use a program called Coda uh, to author my HTML. It's about a hundred bucks. It has some shortcuts in it for writing HTML quicker. But again, like I said, it's just a simple text document. I've got a new file here. I've saved it to my desktop. It's called beginner underscore document dot HTML. Uh, most HTML files end with either .html or .htm. And you may see others that are .php or .asp, but um, ultimately for today, we're just gonna use .html. All right, every uh, HTML document needs to start with the doc type tag. And the doc type is actually not a tag, it's more of a declaration of telling the web browser uh, what kind of a document uh, and what uh, type of HTML is to follow. So this is the new HTML5 uh, doc type, and it looks simply like that with the exclamation mark, all caps doc type, and then simply HTML wrapped in the greater than and less than symbol. Now, because it's not an HTML tag, there's not a closing tag. Uh, so that's a kind of an exception to our previous rule that we said. Okay, let's get to our real HTML tags here. And our first one is going to be HTML. HTML uh, tag basically means everything within this is uh, HTML. So browser, get ready for all of the code. You'll see that there is a opening tag as well as the closing tag. The closing tag ha can always be referenced with this forward slash at the beginning of it. So all of our HTML elements are going to live within the HTML tags. Now, within the HTML uh, tags, there are two core sections. There's the head section, and then there is the body section. Not Adobe. It's dyslexic day. Body. Okay. The head section contains um, uh, browser documentation, such as the page title or um, uh, meta tags. It also contains references to CSS and JavaScript files that might be needed to display this web page correctly. Uh, we'll get to, we'll come back to all of those tags. Uh, the body uh, tag, on the other hand, contains all of the uh, tags that are used for displaying the content to uh, the browser. So anything that is going to be visually seen within the browser lives within the body tag. All right. So let's go back up to our head tag, and we'll first start with a meta tag, and that's M-E-T-A. Meta tags are um, uh, basically containers for um, uh, various amounts of data. It could be t uh, keywords for search engines. Uh, it could be uh, a Google authenticator to make sure that you're the owner of this page. Uh, but the most important one that every web uh, page needs to contain is the character set. The character set is what tells the browser um, what uh, uh, characters are going to be used on this page. It's used more for internationalization. And if you were um, in a uh, non-English language with different uh, characters and symbols, you would use a different character set. 
but uh, I only know American, so I know my character set is UTF-8. Uh, meta tags are empty tags, so they are... Um, uh, they do not have a closing tag. They just have a forward slash right before the last less, less than symbol. All right, so there's our character set uh, meta tag. Our next tag that we'll go over is called the title tag. And the title tag is used for uh, is used in the browser uh, window, the browser tab. Uh, it's used in the browser history. It's used in uh, the search engine results. And it's basically the title of this document. So I'm going to say this title is my first web page. Okay, our head section is good. Let's go down to our body. And our first tag that we'll put in our body tag today is the paragraph tag. And the paragraph tag is simply, simply the letter P. So it's uh, an opening tag and a closing tag. And I have some Lorem some text in my clipboard that I'll just paste in here a couple times. And we have our first paragraph. All right, so before we go too much farther, let's go ahead and save. And we'll switch over to a web browser and see uh, if what we're doing is actually constructive. So I just saved uh, command control S. And again, it's beginner underscore document .html, and it's on my desktop. So if I switch over to Firefox here, You'll see I'm on Google. I could simply go to open and on my desktop, I have beginner underscore document dot HTML. So I can go ahead and simply open that. I don't need the file to be on a web server or need to go to a web address or anything because it's just right on my computer. So uh, we can open it and look at it that way. Here's my paragraph. And you'll also note our page title, my first web page is located in the browser window as well as the browser tab. Now we can go ahead and even go to view page source here. And we'll get this over here. And you'll see that it's showing us the HTML that we wrote in our document. So progress. All right, so let's uh, switch over because a, a web page with a single paragraph uh, that doesn't make any sense is not going to be uh, much good to anybody. So let's learn our next tag, and that's going to be our heading tags. Heading tags start with the letter H, and they are numbered 1 through 6, and that's in order of priority. So heading 1 is the most important tag, and these are used to divide uh, sections of content on the page. They're larger, bolder text that can be used for callouts. So we'll just say this is welcome. And let's go after our second paragraph and say, my latest news. And another paragraph that says, check out my latest YouTube video and subscribe. Okay, so let's save that and switch back to our browser. We'll just refresh and hey, there we go. So we have our, our H1 tag is our you can see it's very large and bold. Our first paragraph and then the H2 tag with another paragraph tag beneath that. All right, let's say we wanna get fancy and we wanna put a, a horizontal line in between those two sections. Well, that's just the, simply HR and then forward slash. It's an empty tag, so there's no closing tag. So that's HR with the forward slash in, the, in between the less than and greater than symbols. We'll switch back to the browser, refresh, and there we go, a horizontal line. We are moving at the speed of light. All right, next, let's say uh, with this long paragraph, uh, after this first sentence, I actually want this sentence to start on a new line. Whether or not uh, the browser is wide or small, I always want this sentence to be on a new line. Well, to do that, we have what's called the line break tab, a tag, rather. And that is simply br and forward slash. Again, it's a empty tag, so it doesn't need a closing partner. And we'll refresh, and hey, there we go. New line for that uh, sentence. All right, lastly, we will go over, I said lastly, but I think I'm gonna throw in an extra one here. We'll go over what's called the div tag or divider tag. A div tag is similar to a line break in that uh, it is always on a new line, but a div tag can contain other HTML elements. So I'm just gonna say this is a line of text 
and then we'll copy and paste that. And we'll save and we'll go back to our browser and refresh and you'll see three lines of text. Now it's important to understand that even though I'm putting these um, uh, lines of code on different lines in my HTML document, that's not actually making the line break. So I could put all of these div tags on the same line. I'll hit save and switch back to my browser and refresh. And these are still on a separate line. I only place uh, these lines of code on different lines to make the document easier to read and easier to edit down the road. And that's the same thing as well, you know, for the tabs and how I'm kind of making this um, a structured uh, HTML document. All right, there's one last uh, bit of code that I, or one tag that we're going to go over today, and that's a link tag. And a link tag starts with the letter A, and then href equals quotes, and then the a, a less than symbol, and then the closing a tag on the other side of what I want to be the link. So uh, the href is going to contain the link destination. So I'll we'll say youtube.com slash saders. And now this has become a hyperlink to my YouTube page. So if I hit save and I switch back to Firefox, I hit refresh, you'll see that YouTube has become a link that if I click on it, hey, there we are, a YouTube page. So I'll hit back. And here's our document. All right, last thing that we're going to go over today is validation. Validation is extremely important. And it's what allows us to know that the HTML that we have written is proper, that there aren't any errors in it, and that uh, uh, everything is hunky dory for a browser to render this. The most common HTML validator out there is validator.w3.org. It allows you to put in a web address. For instance, if we were designing a web page that was on a web server, we can put in our address there to validate it. But we have our file saved on our desktop, so we'll go validate by file upload. We'll browse, we'll select the document, beginner underscore document.html. We'll hit check and green light. This document was successfully checked as HTML5, result passed, one warning. The warning is just saying it's using the HTML, HTML5 conformance checker, which is still a bit experimental, but ultimately our page is uh, coded correctly. Now let's just throw in an error in there and um, and break our validator. So let's just re let's remove this last div tag. All right, we'll hit save. We'll go back to our browser and we'll go back to my first web page and we'll refresh and it still looks fine. So the browser is making sense out of it. But let's go to our validator now browse for that file, check, and we've got some errors while checking this document, two errors. So let's scroll down and under our validation output, two errors are found. Okay, so the first error is error tag for body seen, but there were unclosed elements, which means uh, we had uh, an element that we didn't have a closing tag for, and our second error also explains that unclosed element div on line 15 column 7 here is the opening tag but there's no closing tag so our validator found that we had a missing div tag so it can point out our errors and help us to make good code and good code is uh uh rendered by web browsers more properly so by validating you are taking the first step in uh, eliminating cross browser issues. That's nowhere near the end of your troubleshooting for cross browser issues, but uh, the whole process begins by having a proper validated code. All right, there is HTML5, the very beginning in a nutshell. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to the feed and check out the other videos for learning HTML and expanding your knowledge. See you next time.